Hello, everybody. This is First Take. Thank you for being with us. Stephen A. is off today, but Skip Bayless you, is man. here. You. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And Super Bowl champ Brian Clark with us all day. That was a oh, long time ago. It was, he was a long a time Super ago. Bowl champ. We're still introducing him as Super Bowl champ? You can just say Ryan. I'm okay yeah. with that. Ryan okay. with the ring. But you know what, though? What? I will always be a Super Bowl champ. <laughs> yes, you, you will. will. Can't take I, that I away. welcome you back. Appreciate it, And brother. Molly, th Glad there's only here. one thing I fear about debating Ryan on this show. Okay. As insightful and cerebral as he <laughs> always is, when he was a player, he had absolutely no regard for his body. <laughs> he had one screw loose. Am I right about that? It I, took one maybe, screw loose. Maybe two or so, three. So I, I fear that every once in a while he is going to come across mm. the table at me <laughs> and have no regard for my body on the hey, other side. As long as he says the right things. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he fears nothing. Yeah. I know. Oh, we know that. He, That's he, why he stays in the gym, just in case somebody tries just to jump across case. this table. Yeah. Right? You gentlemen ready to work? Let's do it. Let's do it. Coming up, the Colts franchise quarterback is salty. Find out what's irking Andrew what? Luck. Yes, he is. The guys will discuss that later. I'm sure Skip will be defending mm -hmm. him. Plus, yeah. will the Cowboys <laughs> pony up to take the division, or will the Eagles fly high? Are we betting on Jason Garrett and Tony Romo, or Chip Kelly and Sam Bradford? We'll debate that. But first, in Washington, we don't know who will be leading our country next, but we do know who will be leading the Redskins. Here's the latest in the Redskins saga. RG3 suffers a concussion against the Lions. Then mixed reports surface over whether he's cleared to play or not. Griffin doesn't play in the third preseason game versus the Ravens. Next, it's reported that Redskins coaches want to move on from Robert, but ownership is resisting. In Monday, Kirk Cousins has officially been named the team's starting quarterback. So here's the Redskins head coach Jay Gruden on his decision. It's not so much what somebody didn't do, it's just what Kirk has done. And I think what he's done in practice and OTAs has really opened our eyes and he's proven uh, to be the best quarterback on our roster at this time. Certain quarterbacks take a giant leap, certain quarterbacks don't. But I feel like Kirk has taken a giant leap so far and uh, we feel great about the, the progress that he's made. Ryan, you played for the squad. How do you feel about how Jay Gruden handled this situation? You know, um, I know you don't know about these, these things, Skip. Mm. But Lauryn Hill's album, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, it's one of the best albums of all time. Yes, she only gave no, us one, will. but she gave us a great one. This is the miseducation of RG3, though. Mm. If you look at this situation, it was about communication. You hire Jay Gruden, right? And you hire him because he comes in and he sells you, listen, I'm going to be able to work with RG3. Mm -hmm. I know he's your guy. I know what you gave up to get him. And mm -hmm. we're going to make this team yeah. better. You come, he's coming off of Andy Dalton. Yeah. And a guy who people knew didn't have the skill set of RG3, but was, was successful because of Jay Gruden, Gruden and his mm -hmm. tutelage. And so you hire this coach to come in and change those things. And it's about him not being a leader of men. If I was the GM, if I'm Scott McLuhan and Jay Gruden doesn't work out, I don't go find the best X's and O's guys. I don't go find a guy mm -hmm. who says, you know what, I can make your team yep. better by making this player better. I find a guy who can handle people. The job in Washington is 90% about handling people and 10% about X's and O's and knowing how to coach. Now that's high, man. You need 90%? 90%. 90%. This is a place This is a place that feeds off of negativity. Mm -hmm. Two, other than 2012, the last 10 years have been a wash for the Washington Redskins. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of winning that goes on. So as a coach, you have to manage the media and dealing with RG3, you also have to manage that player and the things that surround him. They needed a guy who could stand in front of the mic, who can stand in front of the camera and present the Washington Redskins to the world as an organization who has their stuff together, has everything straight. Jay Gruden's not that guy. Is he a good coach? Does he understand football? Yes, but he doesn't understand how to deal with a situation like that. He wasn't ready for this job. I know he was an AFL superstar. He was an AFL general manager and head coach. He was on all these different AFL teams, but that's the little league. Mm -hmm. when, you get to, when you get to the NFL, and especially in Washington, you have to know how to handle yourself. You can't come out and say, RG3 is our guy. So now as a teammate, as a Washington Redskin, and some of the guys I've talked to said, you know what? We're riding with RG3. He's going to be our guy. This is how we're going to play. And he's mm -hmm. going to lead us throughout the season. And then you come out, and now, because of the concussion, 
whether you had made this decision because of OTAs, because of mini camps, because of training camp practices, mm -hmm. the timing of it stinks, and it stinks to me, stinks to the players on that team. One of them even texted me, listen, if this was an open quarterback competition, then say that. Don't say it's yep. RG3's team. Say it's an open competition, yep. and the best quarterback in camp will be the winner. Now, none of these guys have tied their season, tied their careers, tied their wins and losses to one quarterback. And so all of a sudden, during this situation, the concussion, he is playing. He's not playing. To say, you know what? Kurt's our guy. We've decided on him, and it was decided before the concussion. It doesn't breed confidence in the head coach to the team. And I think that is the part that makes this thing. It's not about the decision if Kirk Cousins is your guy. It's about the fact that you should have done it and handled it a much better way. And to say now, to even be like, the door is not shut on Robert, why not? You say Kirk's your guy for the year, go with that, roll with it, say it, mean it, and make sure everybody on your team knows you mean it as well. So despite the fact that last week we had the Jason Reed tweet that some of the offensive linemen were down on Robert or were, were they didn't like Robert mm -hmm. and I'm reading between those lines because he was pointing too many fingers at them right. in their breakdown and protection but you're saying now that there's some uneasiness in the locker room directed at the head coach for the way he handled the yes, situation definitely. so now you have some new dissension developing in the Redskins locker room just over this. It, it's not over whether they like Robert or don't like right. Robert. They, they don't like the way he has been treated. And I'm back to the oldest bromide in, really in sports. You can't, supposedly, you can't lose your job because of injury. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if Robert was hurt. I, I still, it's murky to me whether he had a concussion or he did. He said he didn't have it. He shouldn't even been in the protocol. It was and all of a sudden he had one, then he didn't, then he was cleared, then he wasn't. It's so murky. It feels also under the table secretive that it, it sounds like he just got railroaded out of the job, right? Yeah, no, it definitely Okay, does. all right, so, so back to Jay Gruden. I have nothing personal against Jay Gruden. And, and to preface this and disqualify this discussion to, to a point, we both like Robert Griffin III. Yeah. You like him personally. I used to love him as a player. And I, I undermine, underline used to because he hasn't been very good lately. But given that, given that we're preaching to each other's choir here, I look back at Jay Gruden, and from the very start, and you talked about handling the media is 90% of the job, I thought he did try to, to handle the media. I thought he launched early on on a campaign to undermine Robert Griffin III mm. and to dethrone him through the media to the fans in Washington, just, just to take him down, to consistently make it clear through the media to the fans what Robert wasn't doing and could not do. And it, it was so clear to me that I didn't know why it had to be so clandestine, why it had to always seem so secretive between the lines under the table. But it did feel like a campaign. And this time, this last week, felt like a plot to undermine and, and run Robert out of town, right? That, it's just how it's coming across, and again, I'm, I should disqualify because I do still believe in RG3 and you do too. I still believe he has a big future in this league, but it's going to have to be elsewhere. We've agreed on that. But why would this head coach come in for, to be a first-time head coach, and I'm with you, I do not care what he did in the Arena League. I'm sorry, it does not qualify on resumes. Robert has done far more as an NFL quarterback. He has proven far more, at least in that first year before he got hurt, than Jay Gruden proved in his first year in the National Football League. And I know you say he's a good coach and all that. I don't know yet. I'm, right. My jury is out. All I know is why couldn't he just be straightforward, up front, on the record, I'm sorry, I just don't like Robert. I don't believe in him, and I do believe in Kirk, and I want to go with Kirk. I would have respected that more than this slowly under, you know, it, it, it began to unravel slowly but surely that there was sort of a plot underfoot here. Right. I, I don't get it because he's trying to win a PR game with Robert. And I know Robert for a while was beloved. I don't think he's that beloved anymore in Washington. No, not, I, yeah. definitely. I think what Rob has wore on people. And when, and when you play well, yeah. you know, when you play well, those things don't get as much 
uh, as much attention or as much criticism. But when you've done what Robert's done, when you put yourself out to the media, which is what everyone liked about him when he got to the league. Yep. He was this Heisman Trophy winner. He was a Rookie of the Year candidate later on winning it. But he was up front with the media. He was open to the media. He let people in mm -hmm. on his life. And it made him, yep. it made people love him. But once you start to play bad, people all of a sudden start to say, now you should take a back seat, Robert. You're not playing well. We want you to not be who you are. And I think that's what started to happen as far as the fans, but also inside the organization. And, you know, you preface the things you said. I like Jay Gruden. Like, I would go sit in his office every Monday and talk to him about the game, about the team, Just the about the things that were going on. Okay. And, you know, because I was the leader on the team. I yep. was definitely the old guy. Yep. You know, we would go in there and we would talk. And I like him as a person. I like him as a coach. He's just not the right coach for this situation. I think a huge part of this decision as well is his ability to deal and talk to Kirk as opposed to deal and talk to Robert. I think he loves, I think they speak the same football language. I think he can control what Kirk says, what Kirk does, and Kirk also kind of understands playing the role of the position of quarterback, not on the field, but to the media, to the team. Sure. You know, he, he's kind now, of- Kirk is great right, with the media. Exactly, Kirk, oh, he's, he's under- He's highly skilled. Right, he understood, he mm -hmm. understands the game you have to play. Yep outside of the lines and I think that's the thing he does love about dealing with Kirk Cousins and another reason why Kirk is an easier person to give the I job to there is some pushback with Robert you know I saw some conversations or listened to and was part of conversations between Robert and coach Gruden that weren't the nicest conversations that weren't there weren't the normal yeah you're my starter I believe in you QB1 and head coach conversations you know it's a certain respect you get yeah when, you, when you're the quarterback and you're the mm -hmm. franchise quarterback of a team it's a certain way coaches talk to you coaches handle you it's almost we're equal and not necessarily equal in the way we make decisions but I'm talking to you as a man you understand and mm -hmm. that wasn't the relationship wow. that those guys shared so when you have that relationship teammates see it if I'm Deshaun Jackson if I'm Pierre Garcon if I'm Jordan Reed when I look at you and the way you handle Robert as a head coach why should I respect him? Why should he be my guy? And I think what's even more telling about Jay Gruden's decision, okay, if we decide to go with Kirk, if I come out to the world, to the nation, I'm in the capital, hey, Kirk's our guy. Mm -hmm. We're riding with him. When you ask a D'Angelo Hall, when you ask a Darrell Young, when you ask a Keenan Robinson, all these people yeah. who've decided not to speak on it, all these people who've decided, you know what, I have no comment, who are usually really forthcoming with the media. Yeah. Right? Don't you want your team, when you make this decision, Kirk won the job, it was fair and square, Absolutely. we know he's our dude, yeah. and now we're going to play football. You didn't get that. No, you, you didn't. You got a lot that. of, I'm not in it. That's on them. I don't want any part of it. Okay, just to be fair here, given where our hearts are, you made this point yesterday on Sports Center that Robert does come from a different background. Military kid, tra traveled all over, so he had to keep meeting different people, and it made him a little more internal. It made him kind of t uh, unto himself. Then he was a track star. It's an individual sport. You're unto yourself. So there's a little bit of a wall around him in the locker room that, that you can't quite climb over. He's not the easiest guy to get to know. Definitely. Right? Yeah. And as I used to call it, there's a lot of R-G-I-I-I -I -I in him. He does have a big ego. I think he can be ego maniacal to a fault at times because he wants to self-promote. And now we have, every day it's a little bit of new drama. Now we have this Instagram drama over a like what, picture. And we or, have that like, Instagram. Yeah, we can pull that, up, pull that up right now and show everybody what we're referring to here. <sighs> okay, that's what he wrote to mm -hmm. respond. But, but somebody and he says it was an intern that was working for him or his family liked a very negative comment that that was about the redskins front office mm -hmm. but also included daniel snyder that's why i believe robert is is telling the truth about the intern definitely because i don't have a good relationship like, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's his guy that's his last I line question of defense, that too, right yeah. yeah thank you very much but it's every day there's a little new drama that is self-inflicted. This is self-inflicted. I don't know who the intern is. I don't know if he still has a job. I have no idea what happened. But I, I blamed Robert for that. But, but I also, in the larger scheme, sometimes you just get bad breaks in life. 
I thought Mike Shanahan, as well as he coached Robert, I thought it was a bad break for Robert because he did not want to draft Robert in the first right. place. And Jay Gruden flim flammed Daniel Snyder. To your earlier point, he said, I'm going to help take him back to the rookie year level. Nope, nope. He wanted Kirk from the start. And it was clear because he was disrespecting Robert to the media from the start last year. So he, he, Robert's fallen into two not so great situations. A lot of times, as you well know, it's your coach. If you fall into a Mike Tomlin situation, Ryan Clark is an undrafted free agent, you bounce around a little bit, and all of a sudden you find a guy yep. who believes in you and what you can do on the football field, and you're blessed. And you, yeah. you had a great run in Pittsburgh. The, the, the thing I think we need to mention, and we're talking about the mishandling of the situation, mm -hmm. if it was an open quarterback competition and it was going off the preseason, Kirk Cousins outplayed RG3. Fair you know, enough. You know, yeah. I'm not so sure. I think I, I don't want people to miss that we're just saying that RG3 should be the starter. We're talking about the way the situation was handled. Got it. So just people, you know, they yep. need to know we're not saying he outplayed Kirk Cousins, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the, the whole situation stinks. I want to focus on Kirk now, though. You started the segment with Miseducation of Lauren Hill. I have a track on there that's very fitting final hour, and that appears <laughs> what it is here for RG3, and I'm not trying to be callous. Mike Shanahan.